All right, this unit is all about fixed transformations, which are reflections, rotations, and translation. A transformation is an operation that moves or maps or traces an image somewhere else. It does not change the size or the shape of the original image, it just moves it. So the first one we have is a reflection. Reflection you can also think as being flipped. It has a line of symmetry that maps the figure back onto itself. So in other words, if you fold it over that line, it would match exactly up on the other side. And that specific line is called the line of symmetry. So I have a little man here, and if we take out the, the, the um, wind up there, you can see that he has a line of symmetry. If I folded him right down the center here, it would match up. And you can see that his wingtip here and his wingtip here would match up, and they're the same distance from the center of the line. Now, we couldn't cut across this way. That would definitely not be a line of symmetry. We'd fold him over. His head would be upside down. So there's our line of symmetry right up there. Okay? And in real life, many things have more than one line of symmetry. So what I want you to do is pause for a moment, write down the notes, and think of something in real life that you notice that has a line of symmetry. Think of things in nature and things man-made. All right, here's some real life examples that I've come up with. A butterfly. Most flowers are symmetrical and, and have um, quite a few lines of symmetry. Um, a leaf, if it's perfect. Of course, the human body, like my little man. And we also really like symmetry because it's pleasing to the eye, so we use it a lot in advertising, like the Vulcan symbol. See if you can come up with a few on your own. Now below you can see we have some shapes here. And what I'm asking is, can these shapes be reflected? So we're looking for a line of symmetry in these shapes. If there is a line of symmetry, draw it. And if there's more than one, draw all of them. So I want to know is, are they symmetrical, and how many lines of symmetry do we have? So we're going to pause here, you're going to do, do your work, check with your neighbors, and then we'll check your answer. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to check here, and here's what we have. The first one has one line of symmetry right down the center. We cannot do a line of symmetry this direction, because if we folded it over, it would look like this, right? So definitely not symmetrical there. And this one here, although it kind of looks like it's symmetrical, it is not. If we reflected this over here, it would come across like that and look more like a kite. So there is no line of symmetry in this one at all. Now this one here is a regular hexagon. And so we find that we have six lines of symmetry. Be careful not to overcount. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have lines of symmetry through the center of the sides, and we also have a line of symmetry through the vertices. You can also see that with our regular pentagon, we have a line of symmetry through the center from the vertex to the center of the other sides, going all the way around. And if you noticed, um, your regular shape, so your six-sided shape, had six lines of symmetry, and your five-sided regular shape had five lines of symmetry. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually do our own reflection. So let's move this up here. All right, so we have this little triangle here, and I would like to reflect it across a line of symmetry that's not in the shape. All right, so what I'm going to do is pretend this is all covered with ink, and we folded it in half over this line, and it made an impression over here. What would it look like? All right, so what we're going to do is we notice that, just like in our little man, where if we had a line of symmetry going down the center, the wingtip here was the same distance to the center as it was over here. And remember, distance is perpendicular. So what we want to do is draw a line that is perpendicular from each point to the line of symmetry. So if I eyeball a perpendicular line right there, okay, perpendicular to my line of symmetry, it's also going to be perpendicular coming out the other side. And there it is over there. My line's not very straight. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to eyeball this now, right? We're going to do the same thing coming across here, perpendicular to the line, come across the other side. When you're done, you're going to connect your points on the other side, and you should have a reflection of that shape. So I'm going to stop, and you're going to try it. All right, this is what your shape should have looked like here. Okay, so you can see perpendicular coming across here, equidistance on the other side. It's going to line up over here. You may not have lined up exactly with your points yet. We're just eyeballing this, correct? And we come across here, and you can see if we folded it across the line that it's going to match up. See, if I turn it sideways, you can see, right? It's matched up exactly across like a nice little reflection. 
All right, what we need to do, though, is we need to make a notation to, to explain to people how did the points get over there, and that's called mapping notation. Now, to do mapping notation, we're going to use a directional error of movement, which is called a vector. You've seen those in physics, right? So this point started here, had an origination point, and it moved this direction and ended here. Well, just like for the ray symbol, the symbol for a vector is an arrow, but it's always going to look like this regardless of the actual direction of the movement, okay? And this is going to come up here. We're going to start with our original point right here. Let's label it. So we have negative 4, positive 4 right here. And let's choose one more point, negative 4 and positive 1. Now, what we want to do is we want to see over here, what was the point over here? Hmm. Well, that is positive 1 and negative 4. This one here is positive 4 and negative 4. So I want to be able to describe to people what happened if between this x and this y. How did it get to this x and this y? We're looking for a relationship that has to describe every single point. So we can't say it's this distance because the distances are all different. So we're doing it in terms of the coordinates. So if I notice that this one is negative 4 and positive 1, over here it's positive 1 and negative 4. Negative 4 and positive 4, positive 4 and negative 4, we can see that all we've done is switched places of our x and y. So that's our mapping. Here's my original x and y right here. And the directional arrow says we're going to transform that and we're going to switch places. We're not going to change the signs or anything. We're simply going to swap x and y out to get our new points. And we'll find that works for every point, including this one here. So we have negative 2, 1. And if we swap them around, we have 1, negative 2 here. So it works out really well. All right, let's flip the page. All right, our next transformation is a rotation. And just like it said, it's a figure that's being rotated now, and it's going to be turned around a point. Now, this point can be the center of the object or a point outside the object. So think if you had a little flag on a stick and you rotated around the end of edge of the stick like a pinwheel. That's how we're going to do a rotation. Now, when you rotate, you're only going to rotate it a certain amount before the object maps back onto itself, or it looks exactly like it did when you started. And we're going to find that angle by taking 360 degrees, because that's a full circle, and dividing it by the number of rotations. All right, before we get to that, let's think of some real life examples. What can you see out there in real life which is a rotation? You can see below there I have, well, some figures, some are rotations and some are not, but you're looking for something that's been rotated around itself. So pause for a minute, write down some examples, we'll share with your partners, and then we'll check. All right, some examples that I came up with, the yin-yang symbol, or which is also the Pepsi um, icon. If you take out the letters and just do the symbol without the color, you can rotate it around and it looks the same. Um, a playing card is also a rotation, but not all. So if you look at this playing card, initially you want to say, oh, that's a reflection. But this 6 and this 6 don't match up across, so there's no line of symmetry. But if I rotate it 160 degrees, it's going to look exactly the same. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, this one doesn't because we have these hearts here. So I need to choose a different card. All right, this is a better rotation. We have nothing in the center. We have an even number so that when I rotate it, all of the shapes look exactly the same. There's nothing in the middle to mess it up. All right, so now below I have some uh, shapes and we want to find out, is it a rotation? And how many degrees did I rotate it till it looks exactly the same? So we'll do the first one together. So we have this one he shape here, and we can see if I start with this little arrow here, and I rotate it to here, it looks exactly the same. And you can see, oh, that's just 90 degrees, correct? Well, if we do the formula, 360 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4 rotations, we're going to get 90 degrees. So go ahead and try the other ones by yourselves and see if it is a rotation, how many degrees or, sorry, what is the angle of rotation? Go. All right, we can see that the second one has no angle of rotation, or no angle of rotation at all. We'd have to rotate it 360 degrees to get it to map back up to look just like itself. Um, this one here is 180 degrees. Okay, if we rotate it around 180 degrees, it would map back up and look exactly like it does. 
On this one here, we can see we're only rotating a small amount here. And if we count up the number of points, we're going to get that we divide it out and we, it is 45 degrees. Note that some of these pictures have both symmetry, meaning they're a reflection, and they're a rotation. So in this shape here, it is both a reflection here and here, and a rotation of 180 degrees. All right, let's try one all by ourselves here. So here we go. All right, we're going to have this shape right here, and we're going to rotate it counterclockwise about the origin. So first we need to know clockwise is going this way, counterclockwise is going this way, and we want to rotate it 90 degrees. All right, so we're going to take each point here, and we're going to rotate it clockwise, counterclockwise into this quadrant over here. So this is quadrant one. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise into quadrant two. So now, if this is around the origin, think of this being a flag on the stick. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees over the other direction. And it's going to map up over there. Now, the problem is, though, is that that was a nice, easy one to rotate. G wouldn't be quite as easy. So let's do it using right triangles. So I went up two and over two. Then I would rotate 90 degrees up two and over two. But now we're on this other axis. OK, let's do the same thing for H. So we went up four and over five. So when we rotate it, we'd go up four and over five. And there's our new point. Same thing with G. Let's see, up one and over four. So we turn this way, up one and over four. Now we're going to connect our points together. And we have rotated it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And let's see, if we put our finger on it here and we rotate it this direction, it's going to look exactly the same as it did the first time. All right, now we have to do a mapping on this one too. So how did we get from the points that we have? So first we're going to label our points. Let's do that really quick. All right, once we've labeled our points, we can see that kind of like before, point G here was 4 and 1.5, and now it is negative 1.5 and 4. Here was 5 and 4, now it is negative 4 and 5. So our X and our Ys have switched places again, except this time our Y value is negative. So when we do our mapping down here, we're going to switch positions. Y did switch positions with X, but our Y value also became negative. And we can see that that works for every point. So it tells you exactly where you're going. Let's flip over the page. All right, our last transformation is a translation or a shift. I think this one is the easiest one. It doesn't rotate. It doesn't tilt. It doesn't reflect. All it simply does is move positions. Your orientation stays the same. We're just going to shift around. All right. So if we're just going to shift something, let's say I had this little triangle here, and I simply shifted it this direction using my vector, and I moved them up there. How do I describe that? Well, we're going to think about it in terms of a right triangle. Because no matter where we move him, if the orientation hasn't changed, we're talking about a vertical and a horizontal shift. And then check this out. We got ourselves a little right triangle here. So if we're talking about a horizontal shift, we use an H. And so positive would be this direction, negative the other direction. A vertical shift is K, positive K goes up, negative K goes down. So we're taking our original object here, the X and Y point. We're going to do X plus or minus H to get the horizontal shift. In this case, it would have been positive. And the Y also would have been positive. The, sorry, the K would also be positive. So they take the original number, and I add the K value to get up where I'm going. So let's do the transformation. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to do a transformation. So you can see I've labeled a couple of the points here. We have our original X and Y, and it's telling us that we would like to move a, a horizontal shift of positive 11. So I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to shift 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and that's where that new point would be. Same thing here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And mathematically, it works as well, right? We substitute in this x right here. And we get that negative x plus 11 is positive 3. Our y value didn't change, and we moved right over there. 
Okay, so complete it and I'll show you what it looks like.